The judge would not grant bond to the rapper, whose real name is Dirk Banks. He's facing charges after a man was shot outside the varsity in February. The man survived. Banks turned himself into police yesterday. Thousands of families are at risk. In 2019, Chicago rapper Lil Durk found himself in serious legal trouble that could have ended with him behind bars for a long time. Facing severe charges related to a shooting in Atlanta, Dirk's request for bail was denied, leaving him frustrated but committed to proving his innocence. In today's video, we'll dive into how he reacted to that setback, what could have happened to his career if the case took a turn for the worse, and the potential prison sentence that loomed over him. So, it looks like Lil Durk really did slide for King Von, but it came at a huge cost. Just moments ago, reports came out that five Chicago gang members connected to Dirk's OTF crew were accused of being hired to target Quando Rondo in L.A. This was all in retaliation for the tragic incident involving Lil Pab, who was sadly caught in the cross. The indictment says that everything, flights, rental cars, you name it, was paid for using credit cards tied to OTF. And as this news broke, we heard that Lil Durk has reportedly been arrested. Following the arrest of some other OTF members, DJ Academics even reacted to the situation during a live stream. Things are definitely heating up. So um, the indictment says that after King Vaughn, an unnamed co-conspirator, offered money, um, who's a part of uh, OTF, offered money and a lucrative music opportunity to anyone who would kill Quando Rondo. Now, l let me ask this question. When did... Um, Lil Dirk brother died. D thing died in 2021, right? Now I'm not saying it's D thing, but again, we're playing the angle that was played in the Young Dolph case with Big Jug. Like, are they the same no, uh, unnamed co-conspirator because the person died, and you don't want to put someone's name? as a co-conspirator in a murder case, especially when they die, you haven't filed charges, they're not convicted, they technically have been innocent. Right after the police files started coming out online, it revealed Lil Durk's connections to some of the people who were arrested, which is pretty alarming. We learned that mugshots were released for three out of the five Chicago suspects who are allegedly involved in the revenge plot against Quando Rondo's friend, Lil Pab. Dady, Vani, and Boogie were all arrested, and there's footage showing them with King Von while he was shopping for jewelry. This footage was also included in the police files. What, what's the seven, eight thousand? When you make it millions, you got millions, you hey, got it right now. Y'all don't start with that today. You two. Let me see this watch. This shows that all the guys who got arrested had a really close connection with King Vaughn and Lil Dirk. The Lil P.O.B. case was quiet for quite a while, but then we started hearing rumors about an OTF snitch. Apparently, this person was looking to cut a deal to get out of a 12 year sentence, and I quote, OTF Jam rumored to be a snitch, he apparently bit the cheese. So, while OTF Jam was staring down a 12-year prison sentence, the feds offered him a deal. You can walk free if you give us some intel on the situation with El Pad's passing. The police files on the Lil PAB case were pretty disturbing. Meanwhile, Lil Dirk and OTF were coming hard at Quando Rondo and his crew because of their ties to Van's passing. At first, Quando wanted to avoid conflict. He even slid into Lil Dirk's DMs, begging him to back off. But Lil Durk had been buying out all the venues for Quando's upcoming shows, which was costing him a ton of money. Realizing that Dirk wasn't going to let things cool down, Quando ended up dropping a track called Soul Reaper. And in it, he said, N-word ran up on me. Then we spanked him. I'm talking lights out. We do the dash in that Durango. Jump out with that pipe out. So tell him pipe down. So, Lil Durk took his time before responding. And it seems like he was busy strategizing and maybe even putting together a plan for anyone looking to get back at those responsible for King Von's death. Then, out of the blue, we heard that Quando's crew got targeted at a gas station. Right now, the search is on for three people who police say shot at a Savannah rapper, killing a member of his entourage. It happened in Los Angeles and cameras captured the aftermath. All right. So here's the part where Lil Pab tragically lost his life at the gas station. It's really sad. After that. Dirk came out and claimed he was behind it. And not long after, he dropped a song with some lyrics that hinted at it. They like, Dirk, he's a singer, he won't smoke expletive. Yeah, yeah, you can believe whatever you want, I got your folks hit. Aha. So, Quando realized it was time to get back at King Von. In his track, Want Me Gone, he ended up dissing both King Von and his sister. Let me share a quote from the song. Ha, my favorite op dead. Sister talk too much, no. I don't like the expletive. Lil Timmy rolled her brother up. 
got stepped on in some Nike kicks. However, Lil Durk quickly put a stop to all that in his collab with Babyface Ray. This is when the feds really started to take notice of Lil Durk and the whole OTF crew. He even took a jab at Quando Rondo, poking fun at how he reacted when he found out he lost his best friend. Lil Durk wrapped it all up with some lyrics that really got people talking. Look on the news and see your son. You screaming, no, no, pussy. And all them niggas hanging with him. If you know, you know. When Quando Rondo heard the heartbreaking news about Lil Pab's passing, he was overwhelmed. You could hear him screaming, no, out on the sidewalk. He's pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. No! But wait, there's a lot more to this story, and let me break it down for you. It all goes back to the beef between Lil Durk and NBA Youngboy. See, Quando Rondo, one of Youngboy's artists, was actually at the scene when King Von tragically lost his life. His friend, Lil Tim, was the one responsible for it. Now, before all this went down, Lil Durk and Youngboy were reportedly good friends. They even collaborated on a track called My Side. But things took a turn when King Von started beefing with Youngboy right before his untimely passing. Cap. You got cap in your raps. Not long after King Von started dropping photos and hanging out with Youngboy's baby mom, things got even more heated between them. Youngboy fired back with a post saying something like, Emma, make sure my son effing your daughter. He even teamed up with King Von's ex-girlfriend, Asian Doll, to make a track just to get back at him. The back and forth between these two went on for a while, but after King Von's tragic passing, the police noted that NBA Youngboy was really disrespectful to the whole Abla crew when he released a track called Bring the Hook. They even had some of the lyrics in their file. This that squid game, oh block pack get rolled up, murder what they told us, Atlanta boy get fold up, get your up, these throwing up green flags. Throwing that NBA up, for me, set you up to bust your... So there's this buzz that NBA Youngboy's crew, which has connections to Quando Rondo, is set for a long-lasting rivalry with all of Lil Durk's teams. Youngboy even hinted at this in his track, continuing to stir the pot. I don't give a effing. My N-word, just like your friend, you'll bite the dust. N-word. You ain't blood. You ain't ready for to see some brains laying around the club. Lil Durk realized he had to reply to the feds because they had this saved. So he decided to drop the song, Aha, hitting back with a response. And here's what he said. Acting like they really like that since my Brody died. Vaughn, just got out the feds you bring up with your police A. I told Vaughn to leave that alone. She post on OnlyFans. Yeah, eater. Durk didn't hold back when he dropped that hint about getting back at NBA Youngboy through Quando Rondo. And he definitely did, since Lil Durk rapped the lyrics to prove it. We've been sliding through they blocks, and they don't know we have. Buddy has got shot, and we ain't claim it. But I can show his a bra skirt, 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 skirt. Ever since Lil Durk released that track, the feds have been on his tail, checking out everything he's up to. The DJ Academics is saying you and NBA Youngboy's beef is done. Is that true? What beef? Oh, so there's no beef. Beef for who? NBA Youngboy. All right, so here's the scoop. In an interview, Ruga opened up about something pretty alarming. He's claiming he's scared for his life because of Lil Durk. Now, if you've been following the drama, you know there's a lot of tension between the streets, especially with the ongoing feuds between O Block and 63rd. These street teams are clashing daily, and it seems they've got some inside info on Lil Durk that we're not privy to. Meanwhile, the police are digging deep, trying to piece it all together. I saw an exchange mm. where Dirk had posted basically saying that... There's been one, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, gang. What? No Dirk, man. No Dirk questions? Talk about Dirk, bro. I don't even want to mention that name in this interview, man. You can't help but wonder if FBG Duck's death had any ties to Lil Dirk, right? We all know there were connections with King Vaughn, but it seems like Lil Dirk has kind of been overlooked in all this street drama until now. Friends say one of those bullets killed the polarizing Chicago rapper known as FBG Duck. FBG Duck was well respected in the city, was well loved, um, but um, with being well loved, he was always all, also well hated on the other side. Lil Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Derek Banks, didn't seem too shocked when his bail request was denied. His distinct voice and delivery really help him stand out among his peers. What makes him special is how he blends catchy melodies with powerful verses. This unique combination has won him both a dedicated following and critical praise. 
His music really connects with listeners, tapping into their emotions and experiences, and creating bonds that go beyond just music. It all began when Lil Durk was growing up in the lively city of Chicago. He was surrounded by a vibrant musical scene that really influenced his future. With a mix of community struggles and victories, Dirk found his escape and voice in music. Determined to make a name for himself, he set off on a journey that would change his life forever. He started dropping mixtapes that highlighted his incredible talent and engaging storytelling. During this time, he gained a lot of local attention with his mixtape series called Signed to the Streets. These projects really connected with listeners, thanks to Dirk's genuine lyrics and powerful delivery. His undeniable talent soon caught the eye of major record labels, and in a crucial moment of his career, he signed with Def Jam Recordings, a well-known label that helps artists reach new heights. This partnership was a game-changer for Lil Durk, launching him into the spotlight and opening up a world of new opportunities. When Lil Durk signed with Def Jam Recordings, he was ready to make an impact. In 2015, he released his debut album, Remember My Name, blending street storytelling with catchy melodies. The album resonated with fans and critics, establishing him as a rising star. Remember My Name featured standout singles like Like Me and What's Your Life Like, showcasing his introspective lyrics. These tracks became anthems for his fan base, helping him reach a wider audience. Beyond chart success, the album highlighted Dirk's authenticity and vulnerability, allowing listeners to connect with his experiences. Following this success, Dirk dropped his second album, Lil Dirk 2X, in 2016, which showcased his growth as an artist. Fans eagerly anticipated the release, which mixed introspective tracks with hard-hitting bangers. Collaborations with Future, Young Thug, and DJ Loaf added an exciting twist, while the single She Just Wanna highlighted his talent for crafting catchy hooks. In 2018, Dirk released the independent mixtape Just Cause Y'all Waited, proving he could thrive as an independent artist. The project featured tracks like No Auto Dirk and Granny, showcasing his storytelling ability and dedication to his craft. Dirk's career soared with chart-topping singles like Three-Headed Goat, Back Door, and The Voice. Three-Headed Goat, featuring Lil Baby and Polo G, became an immediate hit with its hard-hitting beats and powerful verses. Back Door highlighted his introspective lyrics, while The Voice became an anthem for his loyal fan base, demonstrating his growth as an artist. Throughout his journey, Dirk collaborated with music industry giants like Drake and Pusha T. His collaboration with Drake on Laugh Now Cry Later was a massive hit, introducing him to a broader audience. Let's touch on some key collaborations. His track Back in Blood with rising star Poise showcases his skills and solidifies his status in rap. Another major collaboration is with Lil Baby on The Voice of the Heroes, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, showcasing their chemistry and thought-provoking lyrics. Dirk also makes waves with his label, Only the Family, which helps emerging artists gain exposure through mixtapes and albums. Their music often reflects personal stories, fostering a strong community among the artists. His latest album, Almost Healed, marks significant growth in his artistry, exploring new sounds and deeper emotions. Plus, he's announced Love Songs for the Streets 3. Exciting. On the other hand, critics of the verdict were disappointed and questioned if justice was truly served. Some felt the jury's decision ignored solid evidence, seeing it as part of a larger trend where celebrities get special treatment and avoid facing real consequences. The case stirred up bigger questions about how fame and status might sway outcomes in the justice system, raising concerns over possible biases and inconsistencies, especially when high-profile names are involved. The intense public debate around this trial has sparked a lot of discussion, with many people calling for a closer look at the justice system to make sure it's fair and treats every defendant equally. For Lil Durk, these legal issues have had a huge impact on his life and career. Just when his music was reaching new heights, his path got interrupted and his reputation took a hit. Even though he's seen big successes as a rapper, the legal troubles have often overshadowed those achievements, creating a mixed image of him in the industry. Going to jail due to his run-ins with the law forced Dirk to put his music career on pause. Not only did it limit his time in the studio, but it also held him back from releasing new music and kept him from hitting the road to connect with fans. The time spent behind bars really disrupted his momentum and potential to grow as an artist. Even with all the setbacks, Lil Dirk's run-ins with the law have added to his image as a genuine street artist. 
His reputation as a rapper with a gritty, authentic vibe has only been solidified by his real-life experiences with the justice system. While his street credibility comes from tough circumstances, it's helped him build a loyal fan base that loves his raw and unfiltered style. But his legal issues haven't come without their downsides. They've also stirred up criticism and doubt, especially from people who question whether celebrating violence and crime in his lyrics is the right message. This connection between his music and his life offstage has sparked debates about whether artists have a responsibility to consider how their words might influence fans, especially younger ones. In December 2019, Lil Durk had an incredible chance to perform in the Bahamas for the very first time. He was part of the Unwrapped Concert Series, which brought together some of the biggest names in hip-hop and R&B. Durk was set to share the stage with Jay DeYoungin in Nassau, and he couldn't contain his excitement. He even tweeted about it, saying, Bahamas tomorrow, my first time ever deaf a movie. But things took a surprising turn when he landed at the airport. Immigration officials and police denied him entry because of a pending criminal case. Understandably, Lil Durk was really disappointed. He took to social media to share his feelings and expressed how much he was looking forward to performing for his fans there. Despite this setback, he kept a positive attitude, promising his fans that he would make it up to them in the future. Getting denied entry into the Bahamas can really shake up an artist's career. The Bahamas is a hotspot for music events and concerts, and performing there can open up a lot of doors for exposure and growth. This situation might have impacted Lil Durk's presence internationally and his chances to collaborate with local artists. It's important to remember that being turned away from a country doesn't automatically mean someone is guilty of anything in their legal issues. But even with these challenges, Lil Durk keeps pushing forward. He's been busy making music and connecting with his fans, releasing several successful albums and singles since that incident in 2019. Lil Durk is still a major player in the rap scene, known for his unique style and storytelling skills. You can't deny Lil Durk's incredible success over the years. He's really made his mark in the rap game with hit after hit, collaborations with top artists, and a loyal fan base. His talent and unique style have truly set him apart and left a significant impact on the music scene. From his early days to becoming a prominent figure, Lil Durk has shown amazing potential. His distinct voice and delivery really help him stand out among his peers. What makes him special is how he blends catchy melodies with powerful verses. This unique combination has won him both a dedicated following and critical praise. His music really connects with listeners, tapping into their emotions and experiences, and creating bonds that go beyond just music. It all began when Lil Durk was growing up in the lively city of Chicago. He was surrounded by a vibrant musical scene that really influenced his future. With a mix of community struggles and victories, Dirk found his escape and voice in music. Determined to make a name for himself, he set off on a journey that would change his life forever. He started dropping mixtapes that highlighted his incredible talent and engaging storytelling. During this time, he gained a lot of local attention with his mixtape series called Signed to the Streets. These projects really connected with listeners, thanks to Dirk's genuine lyrics and powerful delivery. His undeniable talent soon caught the eye of major record labels, and in a crucial moment of his career, he signed with Def Jam Recordings, a well-known label that helps artists reach new heights. This partnership was a game-changer for Lil Durk, launching him into the spotlight and opening up a world of new opportunities. When Lil Durk signed with Def Jam Recordings, he was ready to make an impact. In 2015, he released his debut album, Remember My Name, blending street storytelling with catchy melodies. The album resonated with fans and critics, establishing him as a rising star. Remember My Name featured standout singles like Like Me and What's Your Life Like, showcasing his introspective lyrics. These tracks became anthems for his fan base, helping him reach a wider audience. Beyond chart success, the album highlighted Dirk's authenticity and vulnerability, allowing listeners to connect with his experiences. Following this success, Dirk dropped his second album, Lil Dirk 2X, in 2016, which showcased his growth as an artist. Fans eagerly anticipated the release, which mixed introspective tracks with hard-hitting bangers. Collaborations with Future, Young Thug, and DJ Loaf added an exciting twist, while the single She Just Wanna highlighted his talent for crafting catchy hooks. In 2018, Dirk released the independent mixtape Just Cause Y'all Waited, proving he could thrive as an independent artist. The project featured tracks like No Auto Dirk and Granny, 
showcasing his storytelling ability and dedication to his craft. Dirk's career soared with chart-topping singles like Three-Headed Goat, Back Door, and The Voice. Three-Headed Goat, featuring Lil Baby and Polo G, became an immediate hit with its hard-hitting beats and powerful verses. Back Door highlighted his introspective lyrics, while The Voice became an anthem for his loyal fan base, demonstrating his growth as an artist. Throughout his journey, Dirk collaborated with music industry giants like Drake and Pusha T. His collaboration with Drake on Laugh Now Cry Later was a massive hit, introducing him to a broader audience. Let's touch on some key collaborations. His track Back in Blood with rising star Poisey showcases his skills and solidifies his status in rap. Another major collaboration is with Lil Baby on The Voice of the Heroes, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, showcasing their chemistry and thought-provoking lyrics. Dirk also makes waves with his label, Only The Family, which helps emerging artists gain exposure through mixtapes and albums. Their music often reflects personal stories, fostering a strong community among the artists. His latest album, Almost Healed, marks significant growth in his artistry, exploring new sounds and deeper emotions. Plus, he's announced Love Songs for the Streets 3, exciting fans and reinforcing his status as a major voice in rap today. If you like this video, stay tuned for our next one.